Matthew 28 verse 18 and Jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost next verse teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you always even unto the end of the world the background of this is in Mark 16, 14. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. There were 11 people that Mark records, even though they were more than 11. When you look at Luke's account and you know they had um, a lot of them that doubted the resurrection when the women came to tell them about the resurrection of christ then he upbraided them for their hardness of heart hardness sclerocardian in the greek hardness of heart sclerocardian they did not believe the witness of the women they did not get persuaded in their heart they had a difficult heart and then he also talked about unbelief the word apistia in the greek that is they just refused to believe they refused to believe the overwhelming evidence of what the woman said then he told them in mark 16 15 go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature that word all the world in the greek is where people dwell where people dwell the word preach the gospel there can be taken as one singular word which is the word keruso in the greek k-e-r-u-s-s-o keruso when you announce something just make it known then the word you are jelion it means to declare a news of victory or a possession or an event that gladdens the heart you are jelion now the root of that statement because when you look at the scripture they are written to correspond with each other or in reference to each other now the phrase gospel what does it mean in the bible the word gospel that usage is peculiar to isaiah look at isaiah 52 verse 7 how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings that publisheth peace that bringeth good tidings of good that publisheth salvation that saith unto zion thy god reigneth in other words gospel is an announcement of the kingdom of god this is how it is historically used israel felt they have been taken into captivity and every time they were into captivity they felt like god has left them so that's why they found themselves in oppression this prophecy means you will be returned from captivity and god will prove that you have returned by dwelling among you god cannot be in your midst and you are in oppression it's not possible so when they say you are jeleon it means the victory has been accomplished we are restored to god he now reigns in our midst you are jeleon he now reigns in our midst that is the word you are jeleon or gospel will mean good tidings notice verse 7 says the feet of him the feet of him not the feet of them the feet of him singular one person not many people so it was a prophecy about jesus the feet of him isaiah 52 7 isaiah 61 verse 1 you can read it for further studies to preach what good tidings to who to the meek the spirit of the lord god is upon me has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek so this scripture is about jesus look at luke chapter 4 verse 18 the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised and he began to say unto them this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears so the phrase gospel refers to what the messiah accomplished the phrase gospel refers to what the messiah accomplished what the messiah accomplished is what we call the gospel 
What the Messiah accomplished is what we call the gospel. What did he do? The news of what Jesus has done, which is the kingdom of God. Now he reigns. He is not going to reign at the end. He is reigning now in the earth. The gospel is the message of the reign of Jesus today amongst men. <laughs> the reign of God amongst men. So when we go into all the world to preach, we are not saying when you die, you will go to one place. <laughs> when you die, you will go to somewhere. That's not the gospel. That's not the gospel. <laughs> but that's what most people preach. Heaven at last. Follow the ladder. Ladder, 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 ladder. <laughs> that's not the gospel. We pray that you make it at last. That after all this life, may we arrive there. That's the exact opposite of the gospel. It is there now. It is there now here. There is now here. Did you understand? The gospel is there. Is now here. <laughs> That's exactly what he asked them to preach. Your God reigns now. They that receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign where? In life. When? Now. Not at last. Heaven at last is a contradiction to the gospel of Christ. Is actually, is, is actually contrary. May we make it at last. It's an insult to the work of redemption. It's an abuse of the gospel. If Jesus is God, as John 1 14 tells us, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That means Isaiah 52 verse 7 has come to pass. That means Isaiah 61 verse 1 has come to pass. When we are preaching it, we preach that that event has come to pass. That's exactly what he said. So he says, all authority is given to me in heaven and on earth. Which is what the gospel means. It's been given to me. Go therefore. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go. Go in the strength of my finished work. And announce the victory that I have obtained. Don't go and talk about what I will do. There is nothing more I will do. It has been done. Who am I talking to in this service? When you go to preach, in other words, go and preach the gospel is to say, God has come to dwell amongst men now. That's the gospel. So in Matthew 28, 18, what is referring to when it says heaven and earth, if you read the gospel of Matthew very well, you will discover that he is saying heaven has come. In other words, God has come to dwell in our midst now. Hey, Tabata. You know, one day the disciples were looking for when heaven will come. They were looking for the arrival of heaven. Jesus said to them, the kingdom does not come by observation, but the kingdom is among you. Heaven has arrived. Heaven is here now. We are not going to heaven someday. I am going higher. Yes, I am. Oh, in above the shadow. Have you forgotten it? <laughs> we are not going. We are there. The gospel is heaven is here now. Ah. Jesus came. And if Jesus is God. And he came in the fourth gospel. That means Isaiah 52 has come to pass. God now reigns. God is here now. Zion is here now. The kingdom of God is available now. And out of Zion, the kingdom goes all over the earth. Out of Zion, the kingdom goes into all the earth. If Jesus is God, like I said, so he now says, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. What we are preaching is that the event that God promised has already happened. Which is what the gospel means. Go therefore. And make disciples of every nation. Tabayada, stay with me. What's the gospel again? Heaven and earth have come together in Jesus Christ. What is the gospel? The gospel is that heaven and earth has been amalgamated in a person. The gospel is the reality of the amalgamation of heaven and earth in Christ. You didn't hear that. 
The gospel is the reality of the union of heaven and earth in Christ right now. So he says, go into all the world and announce that reality. Announce that heaven and earth has become a reality now in the person of Christ.